Hi, we're here at MWC in Barcelona, and we're here at the Microsoft booth, and I'm here with Greg Sullivan, your Director Mixed Reality Communications at Microsoft. That's right. And we were talking about the Edge. The Edge delivers 75% of all data in the B2B market, which is tremendously. Um, and I was yesterday at the uh, announcement of HoloLens. Can you explain what HoloLens is going to bring with data at the edge and what is the opportunity that B2B companies have? Well, we think the opportunity is incredible because as you point out, the edge is where the data is collected and that's where it lives. We think of HoloLens as the ultimate intelligent edge device. Mm -hmm. And what we're, among the things we're excited about HoloLens 2 is the uh, evolution of the connectivity back to cloud services. We've enabled this device to work disconnected, uh, standalone, as an edge device. It can do magical things. It can immerse you in digital 3D content. You can bring the digital world into the real world. But it gets really exciting then when you connect that to the new Azure cloud services that were designed specifically for mixed reality. And what that does is a couple of things. It scales the experience so that you can render super high resolution content and stream it directly to this intelligent edge device. And you can create a, sh a spatial anchor system that's shared coordinate across uh, cross-platform devices so you can create experiences that exist not just on HoloLens but can be shared among iPhones and Android phones and tablets uh, in mixed reality. So we're really tying all of the pieces together, intelligent edge devices, intelligent cloud services, and distributed applications that really deliver value. And you really have to experience it, I've, I've seen it, but can you give some examples, some real cases that you're already deploying? Well, we're seeing customers in a variety of industries across a, 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 a number of use cases enjoying HoloLens today. They're using applications like our Dynamics 365 Remote Assist mm -hmm. to scale the expertise of someone halfway around the world without requiring them to physically be there. You can use the presence capabilities of HoloLens to transmit what you're seeing and enable someone literally around the globe to annotate and walk you through a complicated set of steps. Um, that's just one example. We're seeing customers in a variety of industries use HoloLens to train new employees on very complicated procedures. Japan Airlines is using HoloLens to train aircraft mechanics, okay. as well as flight crews. Um, but we're also seeing pe people use HoloLens to lay out digital content in space uh, and to do space planning. So there are a whole host of scenarios in a variety of industries where customers are seeing incredible value. And we expect that to increase with HoloLens 2 and the new uh, mixed reality cloud services we're rolling out. Yeah, the opportunities are incredible and it's hard to imagine, I think, as mentioned, you have to see it. Um, but, and if we look, if, let's say, to artificial intelligence, I have a data and analytics background, what, um, how does artificial intelligence help HoloLens and compute at the edge to make this mixed reality a reality? Yeah, ab absolutely. It shows up in a bunch, in a variety of ways. Mm -hmm. Implicit in the concept of the intelligent cloud and intelligent edge is a degree of artificial intelligence. We've yeah. imbued both the cloud services, so today you can use HoloLens to tap into some of our Azure cognitive services, for example, to do mm -hmm. things like image recognition, speech recognition, uh, you know, speech to text, and yeah. so forth. But what's really exciting is, is that when we imbue the intelligent edge device with artificial intelligence, we get that kind of quick reaction, low latency response uh, that we can reason over so that you can uh, get answers very quickly. If you do need more precision and you can afford a few milliseconds of latency, then you can send that information right. to the cloud and have it reasoned over larger data sets right. uh, and, and get a more precise answer if you can afford a few more milliseconds. So yeah. it all depends about what the need is, where the local, uh, where the compute should happen, whether or not you need immediacy or high precision. Thanks a lot for your insights, and I think it's really something that you need to experience. I'm going to experience it now. Thanks a lot, and thank you for watching here at MWC at the Microsoft booth. Enjoy this video? Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and get notifications of my new video.